Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to Zooty Pickups. So yesterday I was lucky enough to get myself a pair of the Triple Black Ultra Boost 3.0s. Now I've been wanting these for a while now. I've been taking multiple L's. So yesterday when I walked into the store and they had one pair left in my size, I just knew I had to get them. I guess I was pretty lucky. Um, so when I came home, I realized that, hey, like last week, I picked up the Nike Vapor Maxes in triple black as well. So I thought, you know, given that both of these two shoes are their respective company's flagship models, and since they came out within like a week of each other, I thought it would be very appropriate to do kind of like a head-to-head -head comparison video between the two shoes. So here is my Adidas Ultra Boost 3.0 Triple Black versus Nike Vapor Max Triple Black comparison video. You know, before we start, I have to preface with the fact that, you know, all of this is just my opinion, yada yada, you know, take everything with a grain of salt, etc. You know, you know the deal. Um, also, at the end of the video, I will be choosing one clear winner. I just hate comparison videos that, like, at the end, they're, they're like, oh, both of them are great options, so you should choose whatever fits you best. No, like, that's not why I click on comparison videos. I click on them to see which one is better. So I'm going to try to give you guys a clear winner this time. All right, so I'm going to kind of break this uh, comparison video into multiple parts. And I talk about the cushioning system or the sole. And I talk about the upper of the shoe. And I talk about overall aesthetics. And I want to talk about uh, availability um, and hype. So, all right, now that we got that intro kind of out of the way, let's go right into the comparison. Um, I want to talk about the, the, the most important part, the sole first. So, Adidas Ultra Boost 3.0 has the boost technology, full length of boost from toe to heel. I mean, if you're into sneakers and you haven't tried boost by now, you must be living under a rock or something because this is probably the most comfortable cushioning technology that has pretty much ever been created, I think. Once you put your foot into this shoe, the boost, it's just like a cloud. It wraps around your foot. It pretty much engulfs your foot in this super soft, cushiony material, very much like a pillow, very much like a marshmallow almost. And it's, it's just a dream to wear. I cannot say anything bad about the boost. Well, actually, there's one bad thing I can say about the Boost, and it's that after you wear it for a couple of months, the Boost tends to pack down a little bit and lose a little bit of its comfort, but it's very minor, and pretty much every shoe does this. Uh, I just notice it happens a little more in the Boost. But overall, great cushioning technology, very comfortable, very supportive. I pretty much try to stick exclusively to shoes that have Boost if I know I'm going to be walking around a lot. So very high points on the Ultra Boost 3.0s. All right, so let's move over to the Vapor Maxes. Now the Vapor Maxes are kind of like the new kid on the block. This is Nike's new proprietary Vapor Max technology. Now it's supposed to be the next great thing, but is it all that great? Does it live up to the hype? Because the Nike marketing department has put in a ton of money trying to hype these things up, trying to hype this technology up. Um, the conclusion is, Eh, kind of, but not all that much. The problem with this cushioning system is the fact that essentially it's made out of multiple air pockets, right? So you have like four air pockets, right, in the forefoot and one big air pocket in the heel. So if you look at the bottom of the shoe, you can you can see that the air pockets only cover about like maybe 75% of the, the bottom of the shoe and the other 25% is just like plastic. And, and since the whole point of this shoe is to not have a separate midsole and outsole, cause like essentially it's like the upper is just attached to these air bubbles down here. You're getting uh, cushioning where these air bubbles are, which is about 75% of the shoe. And the other 25%, you just feel this hard plastic. And it's when you're stepping around in it, you can just feel the segmentation of the air bubbles and you can feel that hard plastic. And I gotta say, it's, uh, I wouldn't say it's like uncomfortable, but it's a very awkward feeling. Maybe because it's new to me, but maybe if the entire vapor unit was one big cell, uh, maybe that might have helped a little more, but but then they kind of run into the issue of like not being able to control how much cushion each area of the shoe has. So I guess I kind of understand why they did it that way. 
but pretty much with that being said, I think in terms of the sole, the winner is the Ultra Boost 3.0. All right, so let's move on to the upper of the shoe. The Ultra Boost 3.0 has a full prime knit upper. Prime knit is this super supple and soft uh, knitted material. It's um, very stretchy and very comfortable. Your foot can pretty much move around in here as much as it wants and it's not restricting at all. It's a, a great, really comfortable upper material. Um, the only downside to it, I guess, it's, is that it's a little thicker and it does not vent as well. Okay, so moving on to the midfoot, uh, the Ultra Boost has this plastic cage midfoot lockdown system. Nothing too special going on here. Uh, moving to the heel, you got this EVA molded plastic heel cup. Um, and then on around the collar here, you have some neoprene padding to absorb sweat. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So you get the super comfortable prime knit all over the shoe, so your foot can move around. You have your midfoot locked down, you have your heel locked down, and then you have sweat absorption and just a soft hand feel all around this, this collar area. So overall, it's a very comfortable upper, but some may say that, you know, there's a lot going on here and it's a little bulky of a shoe. Um, and I can't deny that, it is a little bulky. So let's move on to the Vapor Maxes. So the Vapor Maxes are made out of uh, fly knit. Now, and fly knit is kind of like the OG of woven footwear technology. Um, fly knit is way thinner than prime knit and it's a lot more coarse and it's a lot more rigid as you can see. But because of these properties, it's able to ventilate a lot better. You can kind of see how porous that forefoot area is right there. And because of the rigidity, it gives the shoe a lot more structure, making it a lot more stable on foot. And on top of that, this shoe doesn't really have an external midfoot lockdown system like the Ultra Boost does. Instead, it has these fly wires that run through the midfoot area and pretty much does the exact same thing. It locks down your midfoot so it doesn't move around. Also, the back of the shoe, as you might have noticed, doesn't really doesn't really have a separate heel cup. Instead, it has this hyperfuse material that wraps around the back and heel of the shoe and it really makes this entire area very rigid. You can like hear how hard it is. This is pretty much providing the exact same lockdown as the Ultra Boost uh, heel cup, if not probably even more. So with all that being said, you can see that the VaporMax upper is a very minimal upper. There's not too much going on. It's very thin and it's more of a sock-like fit than the uh, Triple Black Ultra Boosts. Just because I like more minimalist shoes, I'm gonna give the upper round to the Nike Vapor Maxes. Okay, round three, aesthetics. Which shoe is more aesthetically pleasing? Now obviously this is very subjective. This is literally just like what I feel about it. So, you know, your mileage may vary. I think the Ultra Boost is probably one of the most beautiful silhouettes to come out in the last couple of years. It really accentuates the lines of your, your foot and leg, and I think that's why it was so successful. Like when you put this on, the lines just kind of like melt into your foot. They just kind of accentuate whatever natural physical features like the human body has, and I think that's a great direction. Um, the prime knit here, as you can see, is kind of a mix of two slightly different colors. You have the black and then you have the dark gray woven in between. And the cage here also is, a, is, is two different colors. You have the dark gray and then you have the black as well. The heel cup, which is kind of like a new thing for this iteration of the Triple Black Ultra Boost. It's this uh, kind of like pr 3D printed looking material that's not actually 3D printed. It's like gives it a really cool matte finish and then you got the triple black BMW logo uh, Ultra Boost badge right there. Overall pretty dope. I actually do like how they chose two slightly different colors for the black instead of just murdering it all out with one tone of black. That's how the original triple black Ultra Boosts were. And I think this gives this shoe a lot more depth and helps it stand out a little better on its own. And besides, if you have like triple black shoes, they look like some shoes like you would wear to go to your like food service job. You know, that's not what you want. So there's like a very fine line there. Okay, let's move on to the uh, Vapor Maxes. The Vapor Maxes obviously um, have a great upper, like I said before. 
Apart from the functionality and performance, I think the upper is very aesthetically pleasing. I love this kind of like gradient pattern that they have going on here. You got the dark gray kind of blending into the black right there. And then you got this like tasteful swoosh. Say what you will about Nike and Adidas. I think the Nike swoosh logo definitely looks really good on a shoe. Um, then you got the hyperfuse going on and then you kind of got the, um, the sock collar. That looks great. Oh yeah, and one thing that the um, Ultra Boosts do not have, that the Vapor Maxes have, is an actual tongue. Well, it's not a full length tongue, it just stops kind of right there. But the fact that it kind of has like a more traditional tongue, I really dig because I, I really like the appearance of a traditional tongue on my, on my shoes, like when I wear them. I think it just makes shoes look better. However, you know, when talking about the Vapor Maxes, we cannot not talk about these air bubbles down here. Now when these were first announced, I saw the pictures and like the first thing that came to my mind was like, oh, they look like some alien shoes. And you know, like I, I wasn't really a huge fan of the design. And to this day, I, I still don't think I've totally like fallen in love with these. I mean, I only got these because I was able to get like a homie hookup on these and got a deep discount. But like even with that, it was kind of a hard swallow. And when it boils down to it, I think the biggest problem is that because of these really eccentric air bubbles down here, this shoe becomes very difficult to like pair with outfits. And because of that, no matter how special the shoe is or how comfortable the shoe is, like if you can't find any fits to wear the shoe with, you know, that's gonna really limit the wearability of the shoe. So in terms of overall aesthetics, just because of the weird alien bubbles, I'm gonna have to give this round two the Adidas Ultra Boosts. All right, final category, hype and availability. Now, I know this is kind of like a strange category to talk about when you're just comparing the two shoes, but I think, you know, one of the cornerstones of sneaker collecting is like exclusivity. Whenever you have like an exclusive shoe, it means more to you. And it's something that you cannot just like not talk about. Stock numbers on the Adidas Ultra Boost Triple Blacks were obviously way lower than stock numbers for these. Um, the original 1.0 release flew, and then the 3.0 release also flew, and these uh, second 3.0, I think these might be the third, I don't know. Um, anyway, like they just all flew. Every time they came out, they just flew off the shelves. Um, it was probably because it was a, a combination of the high level of hype and the limited availability. So, you know, these shoes are way more rarer than these shoes. So these shoes, initially, um, when they first launched, well, I guess they're a slightly different version, right? The first Triple Blacks were a Nike Lab version, the swoosh was a slightly different material, and these uh, air bubbles were like blacked out instead of this like gray translucent material. Uh, very much the same shoe, I would say. Um, those were very limited, the first uh, Nike Lab editions. These, however, are pretty much like a general release shoe. I think Nike kind of like flooded the market with these. I could literally just like go to finish line and buy one in my size right now. And it's been like, I think two weeks since the release. So in terms of like availability, uh, these are very high. These are very easily available. And these, they're just not very available. So in terms of availability and exclusivity, once again, the Adidas Ultra Boost Triple Blacks take the win. So, okay, so those are all my categories. And if you tally everything up, you can see the Ultra Boost takes the game three to one. So that being said, is the Vapor Max a bad shoe? No, that's definitely not what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is that if I had to only pick one of these shoes to wear, if I had to get rid of one pair, according to my analysis, it would just make more sense for me to pick the Ultra Boosts. And obviously that's not to say that the Vapor Maxes are a vastly inferior shoe or anything like that. These I think are a good shoe and Nike is doing a great job of trying to innovate, but I think nothing right now can really dethrone the look and feel of the Ultra Boosts. And on top of that, like, this colorway being as limited as it is, that kind of like really skews the odds in the Ultra Boost's favor when it comes to a direct comparison. 
Well, hopefully if you were on the fence about getting one of these two shoes, hopefully that helped you out. If uh, you own both shoes like I do, great for you. Both of them are great shoes. Um, I think I'm just gonna throw both of these on foot at the same time so you can kind of see like a side by side on foot and uh, I'll let you guys make your own decision. Once again, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.